<laughs> hey, you want to see something cool? Funny. <laughs> Charming. Magical. It's nuts. More beautiful than you can imagine. Handsome. Can I say Antonio Banderas? <laughs> I've always loved Shrek Fairy Tale World. Plus the boots, he's always a larger than life character. Fear me if you dare. It's the hero. <laughs> His world is just a fun place to spend a lot of time in. <laughs> Papa, you stepped on my face! And we will never watch it again. We love comedy, but we also love the drama, the heaviness of moments. And remember, Bruce, death comes for us all. What's great about the fairy tales is each fairy tale is a perfect little movie. Fear me if you dare. Can we make this more sophisticated? Can we show this in a way we haven't shown before? Being able to get the team back together, I was all in. Working on this movie and the Shrek universe is a little intimidating. Relax, I am pussy boots. People have grown up with Shrek. I love the Shrek films. I'm such a fan of the original, like Shrek, Puss in Boots, that world was like my childhood. When I'm really lazy on a Sunday, I go back to the original Shreks. Specifically those first few movies I remember seeing when I was younger. Hey, look, a little cat. Well, Puss in Boots was one of those characters that everybody was talking about. It really got into the heart of many people for many years. Good night! That responsibility, that weight of reintroducing the audience to that world has been really exciting. Uh -oh. We knew that the movie was going to be an evolution from the first one, but you come in and you don't really know exactly what's going to be the evolution or, or how are we going to be able to really affect that. <laughs> It seems like the right time to pick up Puss and throw him back to the big screen, the place where he belongs. My beautiful beard. It is very distinguished, yes. This time I think it's even better. I have to give a lot of credit to the directors. It's an ambitious story. It's a story about death, but on the flip side, about life. How do you make that fun? How do you make that accessible for all audiences. A lot of those ideas came out of brainstorms. We really became like a little writer's room. You just bounce hundreds of ideas off. They want to hear from everybody. What's working or what isn't working and why? The dynamic is kind of nearly like going to the pub with a bunch of your friends, debating on top of each other, trying to come up with the funniest parts, trying to one-up everyone else, but done in such a respectful, fun way. Governor, light it up. <laughs> the bigger the challenge, the bigger the reward. And this movie has a lot of challenges inherently built into it. We all remember those fairy tale illustrated books of our youth. Every time I think about the fairy tale, I think about old pages, watercolor. The goal was to create this movie the way you would imagine the pages of a fairy tale would come to life. Our rule was it couldn't just be a gimmick. It couldn't just be, doesn't this look cool? But it all had to come back to story and where the character's going. For them to try to figure out what blends in with this painterly storybook style, they had to do that during production as opposed to pre-production. The amount of originality of the places where all these adventures take place are incredible. Nate Rag and his wonderful visual development team really led the look of this movie. We were just constantly bouncing ideas off of each other, and we looked at old fairy tales. We looked at classic children's books that had sort of more of an artistic, painterly look to them, because that's how they were illustrated back then. Part of the animation that's more related to the action parts that's really inspired by Japanese animes, uh, more 2D approach. I was so excited to like see the animation. We use what's called stepped animation. You would hold an image for two frames, or four frames, or three frames. And what that does is it allows you to see really cool poses that are a bit dramatized, and it gives you a sensation of almost a superhero. I'm a huge animation nerd, so I was really excited about the stepped animation, harkening back to like the 2D animation days, trying to bring that sensibility into the 3D animation, which is something I love. <laughs> but the things we geek out about, we'd be in reviews or dailies, and you'd see a still frame. Oh, it's a beautiful painting. Who did that painting? They'd press play, and it would start moving. There are details of real acting captured by these cartoonists. He goes to a different 
hasta la muerte. One of the things that we can do really, really well now is drive the computer to make far more artistic choices. We didn't want the images to look as if they were traditionally rendered from a computer, but rather had a bit of a, an artist's paintbrush to them as well. I think it brings a flavor to the film that's really cool. Art is about interpretation. What's really cool about creating a movie that leans on impression, you can connect emotions, I think, in a stronger way. When Puss gets cut for the first time, we purposefully kept Reds out of the scene before the wolf cuts him. Then in this stylized way, as soon as he's cut, we go to a slow-mo image, and right behind it, it's just red. And it has this impact of you feel that cut. It's a breathtaking thing to behold. I think all of those things add up to, to create such a special experience. It's elevated storytelling, both visually and emotionally. I hope this is our intention. We spend so many years making these movies, but it's not complete until you have a sonic representation of that. Hey, this is a party, where's the music? A lot of beauty, energy, passion. No, you guys are great. <laughs> Hator Pereira was our composer. Besides being an amazing composer, he was Hans Zimmer's guitarist for like years. He knows his way around the fretboard and the strings. The fables where these characters come from existed through generations and generations, so that's why I say, think big. Sometimes Hator's beats were so lively and so fun and so fast. Flamenco shoes stomps. It was actually hard for dancers to stomp that fast. So Hator built this platform that was wood. He had the percussion players put flamenco shoes on their hands and went <laughs> Everything that Hator does, he finds a creative way to solve. And this is a sound that I always heard inside my head. Thank you, Puss in Boots. I will finally bring to reality and give it to you. I'm really excited for audiences to be able to experience the full kind of package of this movie. We get Puss in Boots again with the cute, adorable eyes and those amazing knee-high boots. You just get more of that action and that adventure. When you just bring them back, it's almost like, a, OK, we're fine. That Puss is here. <laughs> it's the first time I've done animation. It was having fun since the first take to the, to the last one. We poured a lot of joy into the making of it, into the messages that we were trying to say. And I just hope it rings true for people it's that generation now has kids, and they want their kids to meet these characters. And so to be able to introduce Puss in Boots to this new generation, I'm so happy to be a part of this film. Oh, oh now you've made me cry. No matter what age you are, this is a movie that you're going to enjoy and that you can enjoy with your entire family. It's so nostalgic, and to be here is so surreal. I'm still pinching myself. You enter into it in this fantastical fairy tale world where you laugh and go, this is funny, and then maybe start to reflect. What does it mean to live a meaningful life? What does it mean to appreciate life? And by the end of the story, have this feeling of joy okay, okay. about the one life we've been gifted. The legend will never die. <laughs>